thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to speak here in such a beautiful place. So uh, I will speak about uh, arithmetic sites and so uh, about um, the ideas around Con and Consani approach. Um, so first, uh, a very um, nice uh, set of uh, analogy, which is a kind of a, a st starting point. <laughs> Uh, for also for Con and Consani ideas, it's just another presentation of what Con did uh, yesterday, but I have to be quicker. So in fact, uh, it is uh, André Veil who, in a small uh, and quite funny, but also interesting article called a uh, uh, kind of set of analogies uh, arising in uh, algebraic and arithmetic, uh, the Rosetta Stone. And uh, so this stone is constituted uh, with uh, three uh, languages. Uh, the Riemannian uh, language, in, uh, uh, language uh, dealing with compact Riemann surfaces, the Galoisian language uh, dealing with uh, fields of uh, functions of a curve of a finite field, and arithmetics dealing with number field. And uh, as you will see, so I will quote uh, Veil, I've not uh, translated it because in, in French, um, Veil has published it, published it in French, but I will read it in, in English, uh, don't worry. Uh, but. Uh, at the philosophical level, is um, this set of analogies is uh, quite close to the ideas uh, Olivia Caramello uh, stressed uh, in his uh, lectures. But of course, uh, the ideas of Olivia, um, uh, well, she, she made uh, those ideas concrete. Whereas in the article of Veil, is at the philosophical uh, level. So let's begin. So. He says that, well, it's a, um, a stone with uh, three languages. Um, and uh, in the second uh, column, so the first column is Riemannian uh, languages, so Riemannian uh, Riemann surfaces. Uh, the second uh, column is uh, Galoisian. And the main discovery of uh, Emil Artin in his uh, PhD thesis was that in this uh, second column, there was a kind of paragraph entitled uh, fun Zeta function as the um, paragraph of Zeta function which uh, arises also in the third column, which is uh, arithmetics. Um, and um, in this paragraph, there is uh, also a very strange uh, sentence about uh, women uh, hypothesis. And we, at first, it seemed uh, as mysterious as the actual women hypothesis uh, in uh, number theory. Um, but uh, then, and it was the work of um, Asse, uh, Veil, uh, Grotendieck, Matuk, uh, Tate, um, it is that um, one could um, um, solve and prove that the sentence on the Riemann hypothesis is true in the Galoisian uh, case um, by uh, adapting um, what um, geometers like uh, Urwitz and uh, geometers Italian geometers like uh, Castelnuovo and Severi has done in the Riemannian uh, world, if you, if you want. And uh, it is um, what uh, Veil, Grotendieck, Mathieu Tate, uh, and many others uh, have done. And uh, when you do that, uh, well, you can show the Riemann hypothesis, but in the second column, so in the Galoisian case, that means for um, curves uh, over a finite field. And uh, as um, uh, Veil uh, says, uh, if uh, our dictionary was uh, complete enough, so if we know to, how to go from Galician uh, language to arithmetic uh, language in some uh, really uh, vague uh, sense, nothing uh, precise there, um, one could show the, 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 Riemann, uh, the actual uh, Riemann hypothesis uh, by adapting what has been done uh, in the second column for the Galician uh, uh, case. Um, and uh, here is the, the reference of uh, the article. So if you can read uh, in French, I advise you to, to read it. It's short and um, quite in interesting. But okay, it's just at a philosophical uh, level. So um, concretely, what do number fields, and so from the, arithmet the third arithmetic column and uh, function field of, for a curve of our finite field have in common? So it's the second column, uh, the, the Galician column. Well, there is a result, a technical result of uh, Iwasawa, saying that uh, a field K is either a number field, either a function field, uh, if and only if there exists um, some kind of uh, ring such, such that uh, K embeds, embeds uh, 
uh, discreetly and co-compactly in this ring. And in fact, one can realize uh, this ring as the, well, it is called the ring of Adels, and you can construct it um, as the restricted uh, product of all the completions uh, of K. And it was um, the, the beginning, so it was exploited in Tate uh, thesis, where he has shown analytic continuation and a functional equation for zeta functions, both in the number field case and uh, in the function field case, uh, which was uh, explained again in uh, Vail's book, uh, Basic Number Theory, um, Cohen talked uh, about uh, yesterday. And it led uh, to many developments because it's just uh, the case of in fact, what uh, Tate uh, did was just the case of uh, harmonical analysis on uh, uh, GL1 of the Adels. Uh, so uh, uh, after there is uh, this uh, huge topic of uh, automorphic forms, representations, uh, and so on uh, after that. Um, and well, uh, inspired by uh, what Weil, Weil, uh, the, the trace formula Veil proved for the Adel and what uh, it, uh, the trace formula Selberg uh, proved um, for Riemann surfaces. So it was in con lecture yesterday uh, uh, evening. Um, Selberg appeared, um, well, he was referring to, to that. Um, uh, Alan Cohn uh, in uh, 1995 gave a uh, spectral interpretation of the zeros of the zeta function by a very, uh, as a, the eigenvalues of uh, an operator of, um, defined with um, function uh, spaces uh, on the, um, uh, a very weird quotient uh, of the Adels. So here is the technical details, but uh, you don't need to, to go in the technical details. Just remember that it just it is um, with this uh, special um, quotient uh, of the Adels that uh, he, he managed to make the link with the, the zeros of in particular, the Riemann zeta function, and it is called the Adel uh, class space. But well, as he explained also uh, yesterday, the, the analysis is difficult um, on um, this Adel class space, and in fact, it is a non-commutative uh, space. So the, vol and the whole point of a Kohn and Konseni approach um, was to uh, try to um, uh, get a geometrical understanding of the this Adel uh, class space. And as you, you have seen uh, yesterday also, um, uh, in uh, May 2014, um, they, they discovered, uh, well, it all before, but uh, it was published in the, at that time, um, the, the arithmetic site, which is um, an algebraic uh, geometry, uh, geometric background um, for the, the Adel class space uh, in some sense. So the, what they call the arithmetic site is in fact a, a pre-shift topos um, with a semi-ring, uh, uh, a structural shift, which is a, a semi-ring, so um, an idempotent semi-ring, and by idempotent semi when they talk about characteristic one, they, they mean idempotent semi-ring. So the semi-ring is just, uh, well, the same axioms uh, of, of a ring, except that for the first law uh, of a ring, you only require the, your set with uh, the, the first law to be a monoid and not a, a group like, like in the case uh, of a ring. So, well, uh, this um, pre-shift topos is just um, defined uh, like that. You, you take the, the small category with only one object and you, the arrows are indexed by the positive integers and you take a monoid uh, law on this, those positive integers and it is the multiplication. And then you consider the pre-shift uh, topos uh, n, um, n cross uh, at. So it's um, just uh, the category of uh, contravariant functors from uh, the small category n cross um, to the category uh, of uh, sets. Uh, okay. And um, they computed the, the points of uh, this uh, pre-shift uh, topos and uh, they found that it is the category of um, totally ordered groups um, isomorphic to non-trivial subgroups of Q, Q plus, uh, and they have uh, and with morphism that are like that. Okay. Yes. It's just that 
you you have um, an ordered group and you have the positive uh, elements uh, in your ordered group and you uh, you require that the positive uh, elements are sent to Q plus. Yes, yes, it is uh, additive uh, groups. Yes. And well, uh, after that, so they took um, a structural uh, shift on um, on the structural shift on this uh, pre-shift uh, topos. So it's just uh, semi idempotent semi ring the uh, semi ring in the topos. So they took uh, z max. So here, so it's the integers with the low max and the low plus, and um, that's why they, they call the arithmetic topos. And for uh, this topos, um, they, they showed that the, the points of this topos over R max plus. So here it is um, just um, the points as a semi winged uh, topos. So here is a reminder of the definition of point of uh, R plus max, it's just an adaptation of the definition Gotendik uh, gave for the points of uh, winged uh, topos. And uh, they showed that it was um, the Adel uh, class space um, for which, uh, which appears in the spectral interpretation of the zeros of the Riemann zeta function. But uh, well, now we would like to do that for other kind of rings of integers. So first, uh, what I did in my uh, PhD was to look for such a, a topos for uh, the Gaussian integers. And uh, of course, for the Gaussian integers, you don't have a, a natural um, order relation compatible with uh, the addition and the multiplication. And this uh, order was uh, omnipresent in, in their construction. You can see you have uh, the max, R max, uh, well, you have the positive uh, integers. So you may wonder, oh, well, is this possible to build such um, uh, a winged, uh, semi-winged uh, topos, but in fact, if you consider this arithmetic uh, topos, you can mimic uh, the, their proofs with uh, this uh, topos. So um, here is uh, the, um, the pre-shift topos associated to a small category where you have only one object and arrows indexed by Z, and uh, the composition of arrows is just uh, the multiplication, and here it is the um, the closed uh, intervals with um, integers, um, well, symmetric um, intervals with uh, integer bounds uh, on the, the real line. So I like that. So you see it's quite, it's a little different in fact. And um, while well, the action of two and minus two is just uh, the same. So it suggested, yeah. Uh, so here it was um, just when they act on uh, Z max, so it's uh, Z, uh, um, when they act by multiplication by, by two, well, by, you, you multiply your integers by two. And when, if you only consider the, the intervals, well, it's uh, just a, a scaling. But uh, in fact, you can also act by the, the, the negative integers because uh, you have the, the symmetry, so. Uh, yeah, the action is well defined. And um, it, uh, it um, led me to introduce uh, this uh, small category. So the small category with only one object, the arrows indexed by uh, the Gaussian integers. And here also the composition law of arrows is just the multiplication. And then you consider the pre-shift opposed associated to this smaller category. Um, and then uh, I proved, um, as they, they proved, uh, it's just a simple, um, rewriting of what they did in the case of uh, the, the positive integers, that uh, the category of points of this uh, pre-shift topos is just equivalent to the category of sub-ZI modules of uh, QI and morphisms of uh, ZI modules. Um, and then uh, if you want to classify the isomorphic, isomorphism uh, classes of uh, points um, using continuity as they did uh, in their case, uh, you find a result which is close to, which is, which, look, which look like uh, the result they, they found. It's a quotient of the Adels, but there it's the Adel for uh, QI. Um, but um, the, the main uh, difficulty was to, um, yes, uh, finite Adels, uh, sorry, uh, finite Adels. Uh, 
It's very important that it's finite adults, yes. Um, but uh, then, so we have a quotient of the finite adults, but we would like to also put a structural chief on uh, those, uh, on uh, this topos to have a quotient of the complete adults now, uh, not just the finite adults. But uh, one can remark that um, the, the units, uh, plus or minus one or plus or minus i, act uh, trivially on this quotient of the finite adults, but not on c. So it's in the, uh, follow the following consequence. It's that when you act um, like this by um, multiplication by an element of qi, since, since you would like to divide for some uh, reasons uh, li linked with the spe spectral interpretation, by QI Q Q uh, star, it means that for a unit uh, like uh, plus minus one, plus minus i, uh, you have to act, the unit has to act the same way on the fiber of the structural sheaf at the specific point of the topos. So in the conclusion, uh, in a quick way, is just that the units, so plus minus i plus uh, minus one, has to be the symmetries of uh, the structural sheaf so, well, you can wonder what, what can we take, and what uh, I tried was the, this uh, summering. So, it's just the, so first you have uh, so the kind of pathological elements, uh, empty set and uh, singleton uh, zero, but then the, what is in interesting is the convex polygons of the real plane, so C, um, with non-empty interior, with center zero, whose um, vertices have, um, uh, affix in uh, the i, so the affix is the Gaussian integers, and who are invariant by the action of uh, plus minus one, plus minus i, so it means that you have a, a rotation uh, a symmetry of, uh, of the order four. Uh, okay, uh, why did I took the, the convex uh, polygons? Because uh, convex polygons also appeared in the Kohn and Konseni approach when they considered the squared of the arithmetic site. Uh, because in uh, all examples, in uh, basic lectures on um, uh, tropical uh, stuff, uh, the first example are uh, R max plus and convex sets. Uh, and because also convex uh, sets uh, appear quite often in hierarchical of geometry and well in the spirit, uh, it, may, it may be related, although it's not a precise relation for now. So what is the summering uh, structure? So you, for two convex uh, polygons, you just take the convex L of uh, the reunion and uh, the Minkowski uh, sum, and um, empty set and uh, singleton zero are just here because uh, they are the natural elements uh, for those laws, so you, you want to add them. And how do you act by uh, the eye multiplicatively uh, on uh, this uh, semi ring? Just by a direct similitude. So uh, if you take uh, alpha non-zero in the eye, you act by the transformation, Z is sent to alpha uh, Z. So well, and then uh, you can show that uh, in fact, uh, this semi ring is just the semi ring generated by the, the squares, uh, the special square. So it's, it's just uh, the rotated squ square when the very initial square is just um, the square with uh, vertices one i minus one minus i. So it's quite funny because uh, you see, uh, you, you consider the monoid uh, topos and you, the invertible elements of your monoid, uh, you take that as a kind of um, basic uh, element of your structural sheet. I know a uh, heuristic, uh, heuristical explication for that, but well, it works. And if you want, you, you take it like that. So here are your squares, and then you take the convex L, and you can get uh, every uh, convex polygon with the required uh, symmetries and uh, hypothesis, uh, just like that, by uh, considering the, the vertices that are in the, this uh, quarter of plane. And it's, uh, it's written here, but it's a really uh, easy exercise. And then, so uh, what I call the, an arithmetic site of contrasting type for the i, it's just uh, this um, data of uh, this pre-shift topos and this uh, structural shift. And then you can remake all the, the results Con and Consani did, so you can co compute the fiber at the points of your topos. You can look at the global sections, see that the global section is just the Boolean. And you can have a definition of points, but there the definition of point is uh, quite tricky 
because I, I impose that the morphism of uh, semi wings uh, you have uh, should be given by a direct similitude. So it was an intuitive definition, but it seems to come out of the blue. In fact, uh, Kohn made a remark that, that showed me that, uh, in fact, it is intrinsic. And with this definition, you can uh, show that the points of this, uh, this Kohn Conseil type uh, arithmetic site for the Gaussian integers over uh, some kind of replacement of R max. Uh, this replacement is just that, so it's the fundamental, fundamental squares, but then uh, there you can uh, make a C act uh, on that. And um, it is a, a quotient of uh, the Adels. And well, so here it is technical, but just uh, the moral of that is that, that it's just that uh, when you you take uh, the quotient of the Adels, of the complete Adels uh, that I got, I only I get a spectral interpretation for the Dedekind uh, zeta function of uh, QI, but also an interpretation from, for some L functions, which are the Eke L functions associated to Gaussian primes. Yes? Yes. So, uh, what are you considering? Is this only places or? No, no, it's uh, only uh, the, the place at infinity. Here you, you are. Infinity? Uh, uh, well, uh, if you are considering primes which are more than three, so more than three places, real places? No, uh, here I only consider the imaginary place. So. I, I have, uh, here it's the complete Adel, so you have all the primes and all the, the, the Archimedean places. All? All, yes, all. No, but it's QI, you don't have more than three places. Uh, the Uh, no, just as a set uh, theoretic quotient, not, uh, not as a category, no. And then uh, you, this spectral interpretation is just an adaptation of what uh, Kohn made, so it's just at a set uh, theoretic level. And, uh, well, uh, as I said, so the, the definition is not uh, very intrinsic, and in fact, uh, Kohn showed me how to make it uh, intrinsic, so I skip over the details, but it's a uh, kind of... Uh, very careful geometric uh, study on your convex uh, sets. And uh, what I was lacking and uh, the real um, advance uh, Kohn made was to, to dare to define the uh, hyperfield uh, law on this uh, quotient uh, of, of C, but I don't have time to, to explain that. But um, the thing is that, um, in fact, um, the good definition to, to take for the points um, is to require the morphisms and the, of uh, semi wings to commute with the Frobenius, where the Frobenius is just uh, the, the direct uh, similitude uh, z uh, to z, you, you send z to uh, lambda z. So, in fact, my intuition was intrinsic, but <laughs> it was not, uh, it was, uh, I was lucky. <laughs> and, uh, well, um, this remark and so on, and it led me to introduce a new kind of uh, uh, arithmetic site for uh, z square root of 2. And um, what makes uh, things work, uh, you, you see um, in um, the drawing I made, I said uh, here you take, uh, it's the fact that you can take the quarter of plane and, the, and, the remark, and in the remark of Kohn also, and uh, this uh, quarter of plane is, is a fundamental domain for the action of units on uh, C. Uh, so, um, in fact, uh, for Z square root of 2, uh, you have um, a theorem, which is a Shintani's uh, unit uh, theorem. So here it is uh, written in just uh, the case that the unit theorem is much more general than that. And you can decompose um, our um, Union of uh, domains uh, uh, 
which is a polyhedric uh, cone, and the unit acts uh, like that because for this quote uh, of two, you have uh, two uh, real uh, places, and you make uh, the unit uh, act on uh, uh, the positive integers to the square, uh, positive reals to, to the square, uh, just by uh, multiplication here um, for the first place and for the second place. So it makes uh, drawings uh, like that if you want. And then you consider the pre-shift uh, topos uh, of uh, totally positive integers, uh, where um, the, the law for the arrows is, is always, as always, the multiplicative, uh, the multiplication uh, of the totally positive uh, integers. And then you can show, you can compute the points. You can show a relations with uh, finite adels when you only look at uh, isomorphisms some classes of the points of the topos. And then you need to introduce a structural shift. So here also you take the convex hull formed by the um, totally positive uh, units. So the totally positive units there, it's no longer uh, placed on the circle as for QI but it's uh, on an hyperbola, so you take uh, some uh, as your fundamental um, convex uh, set. And then you consider the semi-ring generated by the torsions, uh, by um, the action of your integers of this uh, uh, fundamental uh, convex uh, set. And you take the convex L and the Minkowski uh, sum, and you act uh, on that by the diagonal action. So you can see you have uh, your fundamental convex set like that, so it goes to infinity. Uh, uh, so I can not draw uh, to infinity, so uh, you act like this, so you have a, a scaling, um, you have a scaling action, but also a kind of shift action on the hyperbola. Um, and uh, for that, you can compute uh, then again uh, the, the fibers. Uh, at the point specific point of your topos, you can show that the global sections are just uh, the booleans. Uh, there, I took uh, an intuitive uh, definition again, and it is work in progress to show, as Cohn did, that um, it is intrinsic uh, after all. And then you get a, um, a quotient uh, of the complete uh, of the total uh, adels. And well, um, so the I, I am typing the, the proofs uh, actually, and it will appear soon on the archive. And uh, as I said, uh, verifying that my definition, so that it comes from kind of a direct uh, similitude, um, I am working on it, but uh, normally it should work. But um, then, in fact, um, if you look at constructions of uh, both cone systems, uh, there is a specific uh, construction associated to echo pairs and uh, the, the ingredients used by, by those mathematicians are quite um, related to the ingredients uh, I use. So in fact, it suggests that um, the kind of constructions I made uh, might work for every number field with narrow class field, class field number equal to one. So that is to say that uh, your ring of integers is principal and you can always take a positive integer as the, um, the generator of your ideal. And the real challenge would be to find uh, uh, arithmetic site for general number fields, but I think that uh, as uh, it was made in Boscon system, one might explicitly use class field uh, theory in the constructions. And well, the, for the pre-shift oppose, we already um, have it in some sense. It would be the multiplicative monoid of of integral ideals, but the real challenge, as it was uh, here, but uh, here it was much uh, simpler, would be to find an arithmetically significant, significant summary ring with a multiplicative action of the uh, integral ideal. Uh, I don't know. And there are many things to do after that, so, well, so if I already said that, uh, do that for, uh, for general number rings. Also, in order to build uh, squares of arithmetic sites, you need to have a good uh, theory of tensor product of semi rings of convex sets, and well, uh, it's hard. Um, it would be nice also to have a logical description of um, of uh, logical theories whose classifying topos would be uh, the, the pre-shift topos uh, I considered, and maybe uh, they could give an insight of uh, the geometry uh, that is at stake here would be nice also because you, you saw it was 
arithmetic site, so it was only the first uh, construction that Conan uh, Conseni made in their approach. So it would be nice to uh, go to higher kind, so to, to the following constructions, would, which would be the scaling site, and then so for the scaling site, it would be nice to have a Riemannhoff theorem with homological algebra, but as Conan uh, said, uh, homological algebra in characteristic one is uh, very uh, difficult. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some ideas with uh, Stéphane Gobert at Ecole Polytechnique, and we are working on it. Well, is it not, uh, is it possible? What? Uh, no, no, no. I, it would be nice. It's a uh, it's future uh, project. But uh, we are, uh, in fact, uh, to prove uh, a Riemann Rohr, you really need, uh, uh, well, Conan Conseni uh, didn't have the, the need for that, but it would be good to have a Riemann Rohr. Uh, with uh, an H0 and a H1, but, uh, but uh, the, the definition of H1 is really tricky and the computations um, Kohn and Konseni made uh, in their paper are very long, very difficult. We are trying to understand their computations in a kind of geometrical way, but uh, there are still much to do. And uh, also it would be nice to uh, um, to develop analog versions of arithmetic sites, but uh, for the function field case, and uh, um, find again the, the proof uh, of Weyl and Grothendieck of the analog of Riemann hypothesis there. Thank you. Thank you.